Welcome back to DXB Today. We are still here with Matt Higgins and we want to talk about your brand new book. Tell us about it, Burn the Boats. Burn the Boats. It's a phrase that goes back to the beginning of time. We know it from Cortez, but the reality is it goes back to ancient China, Sun Tzu, and the phrase means to eliminate all possibility of retreat. I've always been fascinated as why when a military general is outnumbered 100 to 1, we do the opposite of what our parents tell us to do. We sabotage our own retreat. And what the science shows and what great entrepreneurs show is that if you truly want to uh, achieve something really hard, something impossible, you have to eliminate all your reservations, eliminate your backup plan. So I decided to write a whole book devoted to it. How do you do it? How do you burn the metaphorical boats that hold all of us back? Anxiety, imposter syndrome, shame, poverty, like I grew up. So it's a book of case studies and my own experience about what does it take to fully commit? I mean, remove the safety net. That's my nightmare, right? It's great, <laughs> great advice. But like, whenever I want to take a risk, I always tell myself, it's okay. I still know there's worst case scenario, this happens. And then I feel like I can move forward. But yeah, removing that. How have you seen that play out? Okay, so what the science shows actually is that the, when you contemplate plan B makes all the difference in the world. There's a breakthrough study that showed that just allowing somebody to contemplate plan B while they're trying to do something hard does two things. One, it statistically, materially reduces the likelihood you'll ever succeed. But two, it makes you care a lot less. What this research shows is that the pain of pursuit of wanting something so bad is the very thing that enables you to achieve hard things. So before you take on something hard next time. <laughs> I'm your uh, worst yeah, nightmare. No, no, this is perfect. no, you're my student. We're doing a case study. Uh, you want to make sure that you ask yourself a few questions. I okay. call it embrace your inner catastrophizer. Allow your mind to roam and think about the worst thing that can happen and then say, okay, what would I do if it all went, you know, went, uh, went to pot? And the, for me, I know what I would do. I'd become a lawyer. It's not my dream, but I already have my backup plan. You already know your backup plan. We all do. We have hardwired into our factory settings the ability to save ourselves, but we don't trust it. When you embrace your inner catastrophizer, then when you face challenges while you're pursuing plan A, you'll say, I already got it figured out. And then you can move confidently forward. That's what the whole book is about. Well Matt, when we think about you and I both grew up with that much money behind yeah. us, you know, in a, a tough environment, but the benefit of our hard work has enabled, well, in my case, my kids to be able to live in a fortunate and mm. uh, comfortable environment. Burning the boats for me wasn't such a difficult thing to do because it was like I had no option but to, whereas they have a different option in their lives now. Life's not been as challenging, has not been as difficult. Sometimes I'm a little bit, you know, uncomfortable actually saying that out loud. But what advice would you give to young people that have have been born into a world where they really their backs weren't against the wall and you know mum and dad are taking care of them along the way such a great question uh, it's one of the challenges as we all become more successful as we become more risk adverse because we have more to lose because we gain so much you have a lot to lose i teach at harvard business school i have all my businesses and reputation i don't want to lose this you have to consciously work to define your needs as narrowly as possible so you're not afraid to take risk regarding your children my children anyone out there we all have metaphorical boats. Your kids have something that's gonna hold them back, maybe fear of your, uh, losing your approval. We all have a reason for what, we all have metaphorical boats. So it doesn't matter if you have wealth, you have something else you're afraid to lose. The book is about how to oh, be confident and not worry about losing it. You always take a look at the back of a book and it makes you go like, hey, I wanna get that. <laughs> I need that on my shelf. But instead of the back cover of a book, what are some valuable lessons that you can give me right now from that book that will create a very nice magnetism effect. Okay, uh, something I'm really passionate about is Shark Tank. Shark Tank gives the impression to the world that the biggest businesses are like an invention or a patent, but most of us, I certainly don't, don't have an idea like that. But the biggest businesses that we know, the Ubers of the world or the Airbnbs, were actually a way to do something we all were doing before, but do it better. Mm -hmm. And so we have what, we, what I call proprietary insights insights that you glean from your experience, your life, your family, your context, that could form the basis of a new business. And so I talk in the book about how to identify your own proprietary insights and then have the confidence to go all in and try to turn it into a business. I mean, I there wanna know, I, I wanna know what your action plan is. So I've got a goal, first identify the goal, right? then you've got some sort of way of approaching it, um, tackling it. W w is there like a system that you put in place when you're, um, when you're advising someone? There is. Okay. It's to make sure that they've actually adequately considered risk before they start. So it's a simple four-step process, four, four fundamental questions. One, uh, what's the worst that could happen if this doesn't work out? Two, what would I do to mitigate it if it didn't? What's my, what's my, what is my plan B? Number three, what's the probability it would happen? 
It turns out we're very bad anticipating bad things that are going to happen. Usually we never see it coming, but a sign of probability, it's usually pretty low. And then four, most importantly, what's your why? What, would you, what pain would you endure? What would you be willing to sacrifice to achieve your plan A? When you hold up those four questions, you find that your why eclipses all your fear. Mm -hmm. Every hard thing I do, I always go through that simple four-step process. And then it brings you peace when we all inevitably take on water to extend the, the boat I mean, metaphor. Matt, I have like a two-part question, okay. first of all, because obviously you're very passionate and the book's talking about following your passion and taking out that plan B. If your only goal when it comes to starting a business is money, do you think that makes you less likely to succeed? And second of all, you might be passionate, you might have a bad idea. Is there some kind of advice you need to get before you burn the boats? Oh, great questions. Uh, I'm highly skeptical of somebody who starts a business just to make money. They usually don't work out. I encounter students all the time, sometimes at Harvard Business School, where they want to intellectualize their way to a problem. They see a big addressable market and they're going to be wealthy, but they have no heart for it. I think entrepreneurs who are put on this earth uniquely positioned to, to make that business are the ones that are most successful. Why? Because it's a slog. It's so hard to make a business. It takes three, to, three years to stabilize, five years to reap the harvest. So if you're just motivated by money, it won't, it won't, it won't sustain you. And then in terms of you know, what do you do when it's not working out, you want to ask yourself, is this a solution in search of a problem? Is this problem really big enough that enough people are willing to pay for it? Or is this just something that affected my life? A lot of people, you know, because they're so afraid they won't have another great idea, they can't, they just, they want to get going. They don't ask themselves the critical questions. Is this a big enough problem? Is there enough people who are willing to pay for it? And also opportunity cost. Three years from now, is the future version of myself going to find this interesting? Or am I just doing this now to escape a soul crushing job? Got yeah, a book to read. Yeah, invaluable <laughs> advice. I feel like we could have you here all day and still Thank learn. you so much. Now, Amy. for people who want to get their hands on Burn the Boats, how can we do that? The book is available wherever books are sold. So okay. Amazon or everywhere Literally else? Literally everywhere, guys. Everywhere. All right, well, it's time to get to know you a little bit more. So DXB and 60, Fattis, on to you. Over to you. All right, Matt, 60 seconds on the clock. All right, we're going to ask you as many questions as we can in those 60 seconds. And we're going to start the clock in three, two, one. What would you say is your best investment? Uh, Resi, created a reservation system. One thing you don't mind splurging your money on? Experiences and travel. Uh, one thing you will never ever buy? Love. Your biggest regret in business? Uh, not, not killing ideas fast enough. Who is your favorite shark? Kevin O'Leary. You Me. have $10,000 in your bank account. Where will you invest it first? Uh, most of it on my wife. Which shark would you partner with in business? D uh, Damon. Your go-to activity when you just want to relax and kick back? Hang out with my best friend, my wife. One app on your phone that you can't live without? CNBC. What's, you, what's your favorite thing in Dubai? Everything and how everybody welcomes you like you are a long lost friend, not a stranger. Who do you, is there somebody that you go to when you need advice? My wife. I'm sorry I keep asking the same question. <laughs> Marry your best friend and you'll never have a bad day. Who do you love the most? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to bring her on the show, guys. Sarah. Uh, well, we, we I think we got name. to know you very well and got to know your wife quite a bit as well. So thank you so much. Well, Matt. we did get to meet her, so she is lovely. I get thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done to you guys. Amazing having you. Thank you for welcoming me. It is even our pleasure to have you, Mr. Matt. Thank you very much, Matt Higgins, everyone, ladies and Woo! gentlemen. With that said, let's tell you this later on on the show. We're going to bring you an amazing performance, and it's going to be hard not to sing along. Hi, my name is Shin Hawk. This is Isaac. This is Kim. And this is Vincent. And we are super excited to perform tonight on DXB Today.